Hey guys, what's up? I nestled you among the cabbages here, or, well, Brussels sprouts, but brassicas, in order to talk to you about my green stalks because today starts my green stalk sale. So I've got a vlog for you guys to watch full of lovely gardening goodness. But I have teased a couple of times over the last couple of weeks that I was working on something with green stock and today starts today. There is a three day exclusive sale for you guys, viewers of Roots and Refuge. So you just have to use my regular coupon code. I've been working with green stock as an affiliate for, I think it's been about five years now. It's been a long time. They're actually the first company that I ever worked with in any sort of affiliate marketing. We have totally grown up together. I completely believe in them. This is a family run business. Uh, this is a US made product designed by a guy living in Knoxville, Tennessee, who has taken this opportunity to employ his family and do something amazing that so many of us dream of. It is such a sweet, sweet story. Uh, just their family is amazing. Their product is amazing. I have watched so many people become gardeners in very small spaces because of the green stock product. It works well. I've had great success with it and I love getting to share about it with you guys. But before I was ever an affiliate, I actually was just gardening in a green stock. I got my first one and used it for about six months before I ever said anything. And I've been with them since then, which is very special to me. So with us having grown up together and with me having the platform that I now have, uh, one of the things that we've run into over the last couple years is when Greenstalk does their really, really big Mother's Day sale. I always promote it. Um, it is the best price of the year. And I love getting to tell you guys when you can save a buck on something that I really like in the past we have thrown green stock who is a very you know it's a small business it's run by family they're producing the product and shipping it out themselves and uh, we've thrown them into back order and so this year they came up with a solution of giving me my own secret sale <laughs> before the big mother's day sale so this price is actually going to be um, a little bit better than the mother's day sale so you're getting a little bit more of a discount and basically with my coupon code roots 10 for the the next three days, May 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, you can get $50 off either the original five tier or the seven tier leaf. So with that coupon code, that makes the original five tier $99 and it makes the seven tier leaf $119. There's no limit on how many you order. There's no restriction on color. A lot of times they'll have sales throughout the year, but it'll be like on a particular style or a particular color. So you've got lots of options. And on top of that, they're offering free shipping uh, to the lower 48 if you order over $150. So if you buy two of these, you're going to get free shipping. Any order over $100 gets the new Greenstock magazine for free, which I'm pretty excited about that. And I am really thankful that they're allowing me to tell my viewers first so you guys can get your green stocks shipped to you quickly without risking having to wait for a back order. Hey, Denny. So people do often um, wait for these sales and I always tell you guys about them and, and people wait to order their green stocks for these and I love the Mother's Day sale and now the Roots of Refuge pre Mother's Day sale um, which gives you the opportunity to get this product at the best price possible. So here in the leaf I have some strawberries. This was kind of an experiment to see how they do and they've done pretty well here. Uh, green stock does have a lot of information on their website saying what they suggest and I know the new magazine is going to have different like growing tips as well as coupon codes for future purchases. That is a pretty nice little harvest, don't you think? Hey boy. Oh, did you go harvest? <laughs> I've got more green stalks down there with strawberries in them. Did you go harvest some strawberries? Look, I was going to share these with you. <laughs> pretty good, huh? <laughs> hey, you want another one? Look at that juicy strawberry. These are ever bearing strawberries. So when you plant strawberries, you have June bearing and they all come on at once and ever bearing, which means they continue producing throughout the season. If you're trying to plant a bunch to harvest all at the same time to like make jam, you would want to do the June bearing. If you're wanting to have like snackies in the garden throughout the season, I like ever bearing. So I put ever bearing in green stalks because I'm not really trying to like make jam with these. These are, these are purely snacks. My kids literally, 
come out here almost about every day or two and just strip these things. It's really windy out here. I've got my strawberry green stalks in here, which as I said, these are kind of just like our snack vertical gardens uh, that we use for fresh eating. I have two more over in the other garden. We have a big family with all of us snacking on them. Having uh, multiples full of strawberry plants has served us well. I have another project going up in the front garden. I'm doing some micro dwarf tomato projects in two five tier original green stalks. So this is the deeper one. The leaf is geared more towards, ooh, nice find. Uh, the leaf is geared more towards like more shallow rooted things. So I grow lots of salad greens in these, especially through like the fall, winter, and early spring. And then I'm doing the dwarf tomatoes in the originals just because it's gonna give them some more rooting space. And I'm companion planting those with some marigolds and some basils. And I'm thinking I may even throw in a couple of pepper plants just to see what happens. because ants get them too much, you can't eat them. You, you don't think I should plant what on the ground? Strawberries. Strawberries, you talking about the strawberries I planted over there? They've all got ants on them. I was just telling people about these green stalk planters. They and work you, better. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> so over here I've got another original as well well as a leaf this one has lots of herbs in it both of these do this is parsley um here is some oregano actually i really need to harvest this back and dry it um, and it'll just keep producing oh you found a good one over here i've got a big old charred plant that overwintered hey here's a good one uh that one actually could use a little more time yeah right there speaking of time Here's a bunch of thyme down here. This has been in here for, at this point, close to two years. I mean, since we moved here, so a year and a half. Um, I've been there for two years. Yep, year and a half. So even with all my space, I actually still really love green stalks for like what Ben just mentioned. They keep things clean, like these strawberries have no bugs on them. Whereas I did plant a lot in the ground and unfortunately they're just covered in ants and slugs. And that's also really important when it comes to things like herbs and salad greens, because it's really nice to be able to come out and grab a handful of things and then take them back in without having to worry about them having insects on it. Real food comes dirty, but if there is a way that I can grow that, that I don't have to think about that, I mean, I appreciate that. Carrots? Huh? I love carrots. It's not the right time of year for carrots. We'll plant some this fall. One thing that's really important when you're growing in any sort of container is to fertilize it. Yeah. Oh, it is windy out here. It stormed all morning. What'd you find, boy? <laughs> don't know what smells so good in my greenhouse right now but something smells so good in here I guess it's the chamomile that's the only thing I can think of I've got this chamomile drying and I would say at this point it's pretty well dried um, need to go ahead and just put that in a bag it smells like a donut in here <laughs> Maybe it's because it's been like eight months since I ate a donut. I'm just like <laughs> thinking of that stuff. I don't know. So I was trying to talk about this, but it was too windy out there. I was afraid you weren't going to be able to hear me. But one of the things with green stalks or any sort of container gardening you're going to be doing, fertilizing those on a schedule is going to be massively important because there's just a finite amount of resources in the soil when you're working on a container. I found just like a good liquid fertilizer, whatever you want to use as far as liquid fertilizer or water soluble fertilizer. I like using something that's organic that I can put in just a five gallon bucket of water. I mix it in according to the instructions. Don't ever be tempted to supersize your fertilizer. You will hurt your plants, not help them. And when you go to water the green stalk garden, which has the reservoir on the top that you can pour water into, you just pour that fertilized water into there. I like to do it about once, at least every two weeks through the season. Like right now that my strawberries are producing, I'm trying to make sure I, I fertilize those about every two weeks, which is going to help those plants continue producing, continue setting on blossoms and continue growing. Oh, we have cat. Cat. 
cactus. You see those cactuses? Those are cool, huh? Did you water your plant? Nice. Good job. So over here I have some of my dwarf tomatoes that are for my green stock project. As you can see, they're looking really, really nice. I was having some problems with stunted seedlings, but they're, they're doing really well now. Over here are some more. Look at this. Just, just a couple of weeks of feeding these and they took off. Got a nice strong root system. I'm excited. And because I wanted to make sure I had enough plants to fill my green stalks, I uh, started new seeds here. Oh, what do you see? My flowers. Your flowers. We need to start hardening these off. I think we'll start moving these out this evening so we can go plant them out. All right, I gotta turn the fans back on in there because it is getting hot quick. So I actually have some footage that I shot yesterday. I wanted to share with you guys kind of some gardening we were doing out here. I had intended to finish the video at the end of the day and it started storming I and mean, then it has stormed all morning. I'm just getting back out here. I'm gonna go ahead and let you watch that now and I'll meet you back here on the other side. All right, go ahead now. <laughs> A few thoughts. One, I was eating strawberries. <laughs> Truthfully, this isn't as bad as it sometimes is when I'm eating strawberries in a light colored shirt. Two, children seem to be increasingly hard to impress, but occasionally they decide that this is enough. And when that happens, I support it entirely. Ben was out here gardening with me. I've just been puttering, if you will, eating strawberries, obviously. And he found the kiddie pool, which we use those to bottom water. Like we'll put plants, pots in those and fill them up. Um, we'll put a lot of soil in them when we're filling pots. Like we use kiddie pools for a lot of different things. Ben found it and he's like, hey, can I fill this up and play with it? And I'm like, yeah, I guess. You know, like I can't get too enthusiastic about it because then he'll, he'll be on to me. But then Ezra found out that Ben was playing in the pool and he came out and like we're in at least an hour on this now guys like this is fantastic had i bought them that pool and offered it to them to be entertained by it would have never worked but i'll take it where i can get it check this out in the in ground garden i've got beans growing all in here these are looking awesome i planted these the other day kalima bush beans my squash are sizely it's fantastic. My sunflowers are coming up. I was actually thinking about trying to plant some more stuff out here today. I showed you all my volunteer basil the other day. Okay, here's a little update. There's more volunteer basil. It's absolutely everywhere. There are volunteer zinnias absolutely everywhere. Um, the basil is in other walkways I'm realizing now. I haven't pulled anything up yet. I'm just going to plant what I'm going to plant and I'm going to see where we go from there. I can't possibly let all of the volunteers grow in this garden because there are so many of them. Every row is full of volunteer basil and not just a little, like literal hundreds of plants. But as of today, I do not have the heart <laughs> to pull them up. <laughs> so we're just going to wait. The volunteer zinnias are crazy. They're everywhere. And I'm just so thrilled by this space. I just, I can't. <laughs> One more thing. The kids were down here playing. I was in the greenhouse and I yelled out, hey guys, I gotta go in and pee because if I went in without them, they would think that they had been abandoned. They would come in upset. But as long as I keep them informed, they're fine. And then my neighbor who's over there mowing his lawn, he yelled back to me, well, go pee then. And honestly, that in itself was kind of like funnily embarrassing, but now I'm telling all of you, but it's okay, we all pee here. So here's the parenting hack to be learned here. Just buy the $5 kitty pool leave it in the general vicinity of your children with a hose let them have the idea that it would be a fun thing to play in hey Ezra there's a bunch of good strawberries in those green stock gardens Ben I actually think I'm gonna go ahead and plant a couple of rows of a bantam corn it's like a smaller variety of corn i also have some star of david okra some jing orange okra i have texas hill country growing down in the other and i have some motherland seeds i need to locate them because i'm going to put some of those up last year they got like 14 feet tall which was really cool um they were a little later in producing actual okra pods but that's fine like these other ones produce early those produce late we got to eat okra all year, and that's all I really care about. Another little random thought. 
sweet peas. These flowers are actually toxic. Well, the pea pods are. I don't know if the whole plant is, but I know the pea pods are. I've never grown them before because in my old garden, um, the garden was right by the goat yard. And there were a couple of times that the goats got into the garden and I was really weird about growing anything that could potentially be an issue for goats. Like I've never had azaleas. Like I grew up with azaleas outside my childhood home. I love azaleas. I think they're beautiful, but I've never grown them because they're very, very deadly to goats. Sweet peas, also very toxic. And this year, since I don't have goats, and to this point, my cows have proven to be creatures that highly respect fences. Uh, we actually planted sweet peas, and oh my goodness, guys, they're just starting to, they're just starting to blossom. These are the loveliest things I've ever smelled in my life. If I, I've never wanted smell vision as bad as I want in this moment to be able to share this with you. Here in the south, we really need to like plant these in the fall, grow them over fall and winter into the spring where they start blooming. And right now I've got them blooming in the high tunnels. I got them blooming back in the garden and I'm already planning like, how can I plant more of these? How can I have more of this in my life? It's so good. All right, it is time to plant. All right, so I'm thinking down on the other end by the high tunnel is where I'm going to put a few rows of corn in. All right, I did two rows of the Bantam sweet corn right here on the end next to the high tunnel. This is my marking system because I did not bring any tacks or a marker down here. People ask me all the time, they're like, do you use a garden journal? I'm like, yeah, it's you. <laughs> it is these videos. <laughs> That's the only way I know what's going on out here because I still do my editing and when I edit, I remember. All right, down here on the end, same place I had okra last year, I am gonna plug in some okra seeds. I actually think I'm gonna start down on this end. I do have some volunteer okra coming up. Just a couple of them, here's one right here. I'm gonna leave those because those guys are gonna be bad mamma jammas. They're gonna do the dang thing out here in the garden. I love volunteers, they're strong. So I like to leave them when I can, but I am gonna go ahead and plug in Star of David, and some Jing orange. Um, probably gonna be about six plants. Yeah, probably gonna be about eight plants of each. And then I'm gonna leave some space for a couple other varieties, one local heirloom as well as the motherland okra. So yeah, that's what's next. Okay, so it's gonna go Star of David first and then the Jing orange. I told you this was my way of marking. All right, so I don't know if this is actually helpful to anybody, but I'll just let you inside the organized chaos of the mind of Jessica Sowards. Uh, let's see, I just planted to like right here. And I usually lay a couple of definable like sticks or something down. That let, lets me know what I've planted, what I haven't planted yet. There's that volunteer okra, and I'm gonna keep planting beyond that. But as of today, this is where we have seeds in the ground. This is gonna be a really interesting space um, because as I have pointed out, the just massive amount of volunteers, all of this that you're seeing that's green is basil. It is in all of the walkways in excess along the edge of the beds, just from basil going to seed last year. And there are also as many zinnias out here. So it's just kind of interesting. So kind of been steadily plugging away at planting, but I do have it in my mind to let some volunteers grow as we move on in the season here in the same ground garden. So the boys moved out of the sprinkler while I was planting. Let me see those hands. You got raisin fingers? Yeah. Let me see. You've been playing outside for a while, huh? Mm -hmm. 
Nice. And I got a cut somewhere. Oh no. Benjamin, you're beautiful boy. <laughs> you planted corn with me? <laughs> so I'm moving a sprinkler around because I have a lot of seeds in the ground. We're supposed to get some rain this evening, but it's too risky. So I'm still sprinkling away. I've had some people ask me recently about irrigation and yes, we have intentions to do irrigation. We do not currently have irrigation. We have water lines run to each garden area, but we haven't actually done the irrigation through the beds because we just haven't been 100% sure what we're doing. It's on the list. So right now we're doing sprinklers. It's not ideal, but you know what? Sometimes you don't have to garden in the ideal way to get a harvest. And uh, yeah, Mom, we're just doing what we can. All right. I'm back in the windy post storm garden. I was excited actually to get all this rain because it rained in all those seeds that I planted. Maya actually spent the day out here yesterday building me this garden bed, which he posted a video about. I'll link that as well. I don't know if you can tell, but I've literally spent <laughs> like every waking minute that I could out in this garden this last couple of weeks. It's been very good for me and it's been very fun to share with you. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today, yesterday, all the days that you do. You can come say bye. We bless you until next time. We bless you until next time.